YouTube. In this video we're going to take a look at how to install Open ELAC on pretty much any PC out there. What you need in this video, or at least to install Open ELAC, is a USB stick of at least 512 megabytes in size, the OpenSUSE image writer software, and of course a computer that supports USB booting and has enough power to run Open ELAC. So let's get started. So first of all, we're going to take a look at how to download OpenELEC in the Image Writer software. So go to Google, type in Image Writer Download, then take the one, two, three, fourth link, which says SDB create a live USB stick using Windows for OpenSUSE. This is very, very, very useful software to write your disk images to a USB flash drive. You can also partition it accordingly and work the most efficient way. So the image router exe will then be dropped in your downloads folder. I have it on my desktop right here, so I don't need to do that. Next step is to get open elec. Just type open elec and download click the download link right here. Once we're here, we're going to see a lot of builds here. We've got legacy builds, Apple TV builds, Raspberry Pi builds. So pretty much whatever you want, go there. For regular PCs, just click the generic brand. Now we're going to take the stable version. This is the most recent version. I always download the disk image because I'm going to write it to a disk anyway. But you could also just pick up this regular image. So click on download, and then it will end up on your desktop. If you've downloaded the disk image version like I have, just double click it using WinRAR and extract it to your desktop. Now that's all what we needed to do for in order to get all the appropriate software to get OpenELEC installed. Next step is going to write the image to a USB stick. Okay, so now that's done, we're going to write the image of OpenELEC to the USB stick. Double click the image writer exe. Now select your USB device that you want to write the image to then click the select button. As you can see it's looking for raw files. Do not be alarmed ISO files and image files will work just fine. Just type in OpenELEC and it should pop up down here. I'll get this in the middle of the window here. As you can see, open ELEC generic x86-64 and the version EFI-IMG. Now click open. All you have to do now is click copy. It will prompt you to overwrite everything on a disk. Click yes. And now we're just going to wait for all of the 292 megabytes to be written to the disk. So as you can see, you really don't need a hell of a lot of space to actually write the open ELEC image to a USB flash drive. You just need a really old flash drive that you have laying around so you don't have to waste any of your regular use USB sticks. So that could be useful. You could even install it to USB stick if you wanted to, but uh, more about that later. Success! And your open ELEC image is written to your USB flash drive. The next step is going to install open ELEC and boot from a USB flash drive and then we're going to set open ELEC up so you can take a look at the basic settings. I've already inserted my USB stick into the computer and I'm going to install open ELEC on. And once it has booted from USB, you're good, you're good with this screen. If you don't know how to boot from USB, insert the USB stick, power up the computer and press the boot menu key. On Asus motherboards this is F8, on ASRock motherboards this is F11, and on Gigabyte motherboards this is usually F12. Once that's done, you select your USB stick in the list and hit enter, and it should start booting from the USB flash drive. So once that's completed, you agree with this screen. We're going with option 1 here. And I just noticed that my flashlight on my phone has turned on, which is very weird. Hold on for a little bit while I can get my camera to focus once again. There we go. I'm going for a quick install of Open ELEC. We've got a number of devices to choose from in my case. 
This ATA WD1200 drive is the drive that I already have OpenELEC running on. So I'm going to install it to a USB stick for this video purpose. Then select OK, which I forgot, hit enter. SSH is a way to enter your computer from outside using a terminal connection. Because you don't have straight uh, access with the terminal to open ELEC from within the operating system itself, so you have to do it from an external host. In my case, I don't need to manage it externally, and most of you probably shouldn't either, so we can just select no. You can enable this later, because it's a boot flag. It's going to ask us if we want to wipe the disk. Of course, we need yes. Last chance. Once again, yes. The screen is going to flicker a bit, which is very normal. Don't be alarmed. It's going to install OpenELAC on your particular drive. If you don't have a UEFI capable system, the boot menu that you get. Uh, after you've actually booted from the USB, it might look a little bit different. Just select the Install Open ELEC option there. I can imagine that there are people out there that don't really have the latest and greatest systems, so that should be helpful to you. Now it's going to install the system. Please note that installing to a USB stick using a USB stick can take a little while. Even though it's only 300 megabytes, but my USB stick 16 gig that I have in the back of there is slow as turds. Now, here on the bottom we have an option called Reboot. Highlight it and press Enter. And we should be golden. See the light is still on, that's just annoying. I'm going to hit F8 again because it's not uh, my primary boot device. There's our boot menu. In this case I'm going to boot from the PNY USB flash drive. I'm going to hit the UEFI option. It should start booting from the USB stick in the back of my computer. Okay, clearly did not. Let me fix this. Okay, by uh, just uh, you know taking the SATA cable out of my hard drive that I already had an open ELEC image on, I could actually boot from the USB stick. So now I actually have my open ELEC installation loading right here. Might not look like much because everything is still black, but uh, like I said, the USB stick I installed to is pretty slow. If you're running this on a hard drive, it has probably booted by now. <laughs> so now we're greeted with the XBMC Media Center Gotham logo because that's what we're booting into. Open ELEC is pretty much just uh, XBMC with some uh, extensions in the background like Samba and uh, SSH. Still waiting to load. You know what, I'm just going to make a cut in the video here because it's going to take a little while. Oakley dokley, we're done. Open ELEC is installed. Now we're going to go through a little bit of the uh, set of parameters here. We get it with a welcome screen. So, down here it says regional settings, language is English, keyboard US. Going to click next here. Now you select your network host name. The host name is what identifies your computer on the network. So if you want to know what kind of system it is, you can use host names to identify the system quickly. Especially if you have a lot of machines on your network and you're not quite sure what you're sharing with. For now we're just going to leave this open ELEC. You can edit this if you want to. 
click next. Now you can see all the networks are available, either wireless or wired. Wireless controllers, well, it depends if it's actually detected, same goes for the wired controllers, of course. If your hard drive does not support Linux very well, you're going to find out right now. If there's a cable in the Ethernet port, or your Wi-Fi is actually, you know, active, and you're not seeing anything here, then your cards are probably not supported. Right now, my wired connection is active, and I already have an IP address. So that's just fine, we can click Next. Here are the services. You can use SSH for remote access and Samba to share files that are connected to the computer. If you, uh, if you just put in an extra hard drive or an external drive, OpenELEC will pick this up and share that drive using Samba or using the SMB protocol. The SMB protocol allows you to share pretty much files from any computer with a Windows PC. Windows is kind of weird in its file sharing, so you need SMB in order to get Windows to talk to Unix machines, like Linux machines, uh, Macs, and whatever kind of workstations out there that use Unix. So we're going to click Next here, because we want Samba. And now it's set up, you just have to click Next. It won't allow me to click Next, thank you. And there you go, Open Elec is installed, you can start running your media that's what OpenELEC is all about. Of course you can just once again go back into the settings where I go into system and then settings now you can see your system name, keyboard layouts you want to use, updates, more interesting network options like wired networks, VPNs, NTP. You can also you can view reactive connections, the services that you enabled, Bluetooth and all that good stuff. I imagine you could use Bluetooth with this, so you can use, for instance, a, a media center or remote. I should get one of those, really. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's XBMC, or well, Open Elec rather, installed. Hopefully, you found this tutorial somewhat useful. I thank you all for watching, and don't forget to s s some. Ugh comment and subscribe. I just uh, mixed those words up in my mouth. That's not really useful.